Hey there, Cheese here, and welcome back to the Mega Man Zero Perfect Runs. Last time, we took on Aztec Falcon and succeeded admirably. And now we've got choices in life, so let's go conquer death! We're fighting Anubis Necromancis III. He's a Rephloid with a really long name, and he's convinced himself he's the ruler of the desert who holds reign over life and death. Now that we've got some allies who've crash-landed in the desert, He's kind of a problem, because you just know he's not going to give us his permission to search for him. The nice thing about this stage is none of the enemies seem to notice you in time to um, do anything. You can just run right past most of them. We've got sand jaws here, these little bear traps. Chondroids, which swoop down at, out of the sky, whoops, and sand snakes, who emerge from the ground and lob a bunch of bombs at you. Honestly, unless you're standing just about still, the sand snakes and chondroids, which are the main enemies in the stage, really can't do much of anything. This here is a quicksand mixer. You can barely hit it with the buster, so I think it's fine just slashing it apart with the saber. Once you kill it, the quicksand flowing down these pits will stop moving. Uh, and don't run into it, by the way. Those twirling blades will hurt you. Whoop, there's the bombs. There's another- there's some more bombs. And there's another nice thing about chondroids and sand snakes. They're the complete opposite of durable, so... Any bad situations you get in with them can be rectified with just a few shots. You want to take this one out, though, beforehand, because you've got a second one of these coming up. They're Tech Twisters. They summon tornadoes that push you back, though never far enough to make it uh, an issue, and uh, have little pebbles flying around that deflect your shots and hurt you. They really serve no purpose but to waste time, and fortunately they never respawn. Here's someone who wastes time with another purpose, Anubis Necromancis the Third. Working for Fafnir, King of Destruction, Deep in the Desert, yada yada. Gotta defeat him. His staff blocks shots. Fortunately, during both of his main attacks, you get opportunities to shoot past it. One of them is swirling it around himself while he summons zombies, and this is his other one, flinging it around the bottom of the screen. There's his third attack that's not common, and here's his fourth. In this one, he. Uh, drops below the ground, and summons between two and four sets of pillars to come and smash us. He'll use that automatically when he's taken enough damage. Oh jeez. The nice thing about that attack is it gets rid of all the Pantheon zombies that are on screen. He's got a rare uh, chance to use it during the battle Ah, without being uh, invoked into it by low health, like so, but like I said, it's really rare and you should never count on it. Those Pantheon zombies are so durable and they soak up, what, 10 hits to kill? Taking care of them should definitely be your first priority because he can summon up to three at a time and then summon more before you've d dealt with them properly. His other attack that I don't believe I've described yet is if you're too far on his side of the screen when he's not attacking, he'll throw his staff directly at you and then wrap around to the other side of the screen. He won't use that twice in a row. Um. It's a nice way to get free hits on him when you're not busy, and it's a nice way to kind of stall for time and keep him out of your hair when you are busy. Like now! Except, I'm not exactly in the position where I can move freely around the arena, which is kind of necessary for dodging that thing that he throws directly at you. I hate these zombies. Pantheon zombies are the number one issue in this boss fight. That and the staff. Alright, breather, finally. Breather room. 
By the way, bosses all have X attacks, or EX attacks, one of the two. You pronounce it some way or another. <laughs> I'll talk about this guys later. Take out zombies. Because this will happen, there can be a max of four on screen at a moment, but he's happy to refill. To <sighs> I've mashed enough! Please let me attack you normally. Alright. Yeah. You Sometimes the next hit will make him... Uh... Oh good, he's almost down. Oh, thank goodness! Yes! Anubis Necromancist is down at last. So, huh, let's collect his cyber elf and head on. Hey, we're deep in the desert now. There's a fallen comrade. And he can walk. Mission clear. Or not. You like escort missions, right? Oh, so remember how I said the enemies in the stage really don't do anything if you're not essentially walk standing still? Yeah, this is gonna be great fun for all. This guy will stop move. I also can't hit these that are too low to the ground without the help of the saber. So here we go again. You're safe for the first couple of birds by just standing where you are. If you lead him off screen, he'll stop moving. You gotta touch him to get him moving again. Uh, don't leave him off screen too long though, or else enemies will start to appear and swarm him. And that's bad. There's a second bird you're safe from. Now, since the snakes start being an issue, luckily you can shoot their bombs down. Oh, I'm surprised that connected. In this part, be very careful about where sand snakes pop up. If you're lucky, you can uh, shoot them just barely when they, right when they pop up. If you're right next to them, otherwise they have to be on higher ground than you to shoot them. So that going down that incline is an issue. Here you go. shoot a lot. Uh oh. This guy takes damage, by the way, and you gotta keep him from dying. Alright, I've taken care of the quicksand here, that's good. I need him to not walk into those, so I'm stopping him and picking him back up. And stopping him again. Be careful not to rush into these yourself, by the way. Alright, this is the one that I can do from close. This is the one you want to hang back while you kill. Because if you get on level with it, a sand snake will start shooting at you. And you don't want it shooting at you. There's a bird up here, I think. Uh-huh. Right near some sand snakes. The main thing with this return trip is simply taking things out before they're an issue. I almost got hit there. Here's the second one. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, ah. Oh my gosh, he didn't get hit. I'm so lucky. There's a bird here soon. Here we go. Leave, flee, run. There's the enemy swarming him that I mentioned. I can almost do. <sighs> Okay, that bird is just a fake out. It's, you're always safe from it. Run, run, run. Run, guy, run, guy. Okay, this is where I thought I was earlier. I think I'm gonna clear! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes! I was expecting so many more outtakes. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm saved.
Yes, I am. Woo! <laughs> Let me tell you something. I think I have less outtakes for this than the intro stage. That's a fluke. Oh my goodness. Wow. It says you, but shut up. You know, I don't care about you. I got no damage through all of that, and the guy survived with no damage. Alright? I'm... I'm a slow king, so ha. And water is good against ground, and I think I'm going to stop talking. Another comrade has been saved. According to his report, enemies are planning to conduct a large-scale attack on the resistance base. That's bad. Yeah, you sure will. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> while there aren't many real outtakes, I do have qu quite a bit of practice footage I can show for it. Oh man, I just can't believe that. That ah, you. Okay, look, outtakes time. Enjoy, see you. I'm off to enjoy myself a nice hearty dinner for celebration. Dead man walking, walking down the hall. Judge says guilty, but still he's standing tall. Dead man walking, they say broke the law. For taking the life of another man who comes to the wrong. Before we move on, there's one more thing to touch on, and this is related. If you're wondering why in the world I managed to get an A rank with a score of 77, the score shown in these result screens only shows your score for the stage, while the rank shown is based on your average score throughout the entire game. It's a little confusing and unhelpful, but it's still good to know because of X attacks. Like I mentioned in the run, X attacks are special attacks that the bosses only resort to when you're at an a, at least at an A rank. As is usually the case with extra attacks, they make each boss fight a little bit more interesting, and some boss fights a lot more interesting, so I'll be sure to show off as many as I can, which hopefully is all of them. Now, Anubis Necromancer III is a special case because he's the only boss in the entire series whose X attack replaces one of his normal attacks. In, this, in his case, it's when he throws his staff. If you're at an A or higher, he'll throw his staff and sweep it across the bottom of the screen like he did in the perfect run. If you're at a B or lower, he'll throw it and it'll aim directly at you, and then he'll cross over to the other side of the screen and pull it back to him. Kind of like what he does when he gets away from you, except he uh, goes directly across instead of wrapping around so he's a bit more of an obstacle, and he can use it whenever he feels like it. Honestly, it seems harder to dodge than the X attack, but, uh, well, we can chalk that one up to 0-1 being pretty unrefined. Anyway, that's the last of my spiels for quite some time, so let's move on to the outtakes. Enjoy! If you get too far on his side of the, of the state of the arena, which I'm going to have to, well, never mind. When he's not attacking, that is. Oh, that was just dumb. Um. <laughs> Let's try that again. They both work in the right places. Just like that. If you head over too far over to his side of the stage. Ow. Ah. Ah. Get out of here. Honestly, this guy is just a pain. You kind of want him to do this as much as possible so that you can get in as many hits as possible, but you really... 
you want to make sure you have a clear playing field to do so. If you head too far onto his side of the field, he'll throw his staff directly at you, and then wrap around the edges of the screen over to the other side. Or he'll just keep making zombies. This is between two to four sets will pop up, and uh oh. Um, uh oh. Ah, uh, no. Got it. They're real adorable, and they never stop walking towards you, so take them out as a first priority. Are you serious? I'm not even going to get to practice the last part of the stage. Duh. As he gets lower and lower in health, he'll be more and more happy with the concept of a zombie apocalypse. Get away from me. Oh, that was... I'm so glad that wasn't a real attempt. Oh man, this is going to be a terrible stage. Get as far down that ledge, bridge, woohoo! Get as far down that slope as we can. Oh! <laughs> well, guess I can practice again. Oh, or not. <laughs> all in all, whether this guy is hard or not really depends on how he's feeling. If he's in the mood for zombies, he's hard. If he's not, he's not. And right now, he doesn't seem to be in the mood for zombies all the time. Now he does. He can be in the mood for zombies whenever he feels like it. It's pretty terrible. And you're, and it, at the end of a battle, which is the best time for this, it creates a lot of situations you're hard pressed to escape from, like, uh, god, yeah. Ah, taking notes on what places are safe and aren't safe. And then, be very, very cautious. Last enemy. Last. Never mind. Note to self never respawn that guy. There's the last enemy. They're all going right past. This does matter. It's a uh, quicksand generator, and I got hit by it. Actually, I should probably go check the enemy names before I start saying what they are. You've got Sand Snakes. Oh, That's a Chondroid. Be careful around those. we got Sand Snakes here, and Sand Jaws, those quicksand traps that uh, you kept seeing. Or quick Bear Traps. Quicksand Traps. But really, it's just free hits for my purposes. At least, assuming you're not busy. <laughs> and if you are busy, it's a good chance to get a breather to deal with the z zombies that... The zombie apocalypse that you're no doubt facing. The terrain is dark. There's the fourth. There we go. Yeah... He can basically force you to take damage any two attacks he feels like if they're summon max zombies both twice in a row. Hate this boss. Before I started recording, I was worried 
Anubis Necromantis would end up ranking an 8 or a 9. After recording, I was worried he'd end up ranking a 3 or a 4. What have I decided on? After trying this a second time, I've decided he's getting a 5 out of 10. There's... It, my success was definitely a fluke, but just nowhere near as big as much of one as I thought it was. While it's true the entire last third of the boss fight can present major issues if you get unlucky, if you don't get unlucky it presents no issues, and the first half of the stage presents no issues either. On your way back, all that present issues are the sand snakes. And they kind of fall into the same category as the boss fight. Depending on where they pop up, which uh, after the first time is random, and depending on how many of the bombs you miss, you can get into some very, very bad situations. In fact, uh, there's some arts bombs can fly in that I'm not even sure you can safely get uh, your injured Reploid buddy out of the way without running yourself into into a sand snake. Um, but if you do manage to shoot down all, all of the bombs that are in your way and kill all the sand snakes before they cause any problems, then there's not going to be nothing in your way. This was a really tricky stage to rate because all of the very, very dangerous situations that this stage can put you in can be avoided with either luck or, well, honestly, mostly luck. As I guess I've demonstrated, you don't need much luck to get lucky enough for that to happen. Although, I admit that the last leg of the stage I was really flying by on the seat of my pants and I have no idea how I managed that. So, it's a bit of an unsteady verdict, but I think that's what I'm sticking with. The Anubis Necromantis gets a 5 out of 10. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this has been Cheese. See you later.